On episode 58, we continue our Philippine American History Month series. Today, I sit down with Jester Gonzalez from Malaya South Bay, Camille Valario from Lead Filipino, and Mark Serrano from the Filipino Youth Coalition and Filipino American National Historical Society, Santa Clara Valley. They helped me to get to know the Filipino community in the South Bay a bit more and share all the activities taking place this month. We also talk about what it means to be Filipino enough when Filipino American History Month came into our view and how Ube has gone all mainstream. Thanks for being here. Grab a beverage, pull up a chair, and enjoy listening to my conversation with Juster, Camille, and Mark. My name is Bruce Reyes Chow, and this is BRC and Friends. Each episode, my co-host and I chat with activists, artists, academics, and adventurers to discuss politics, faith, pop culture, technology, and as you will discover, pretty much everything that pops into our heads. This is basically an excuse for us to hang out with friends and colleagues and riff about things that matter. Welcome to BRC and Friends. And welcome to BRC and Friends, the San Jose Filipino edition. We have some folks from the community who have invited to be on. Um, and they all said yes. I don't know if they know exactly what they're getting into, but uh, we're glad to have this second episode uh, for Filipino American History Month. And so we uh, want to talk a little about local, where I'm living now. Folks know that I've been uh, all over the Bay Area, but San Jose is my home and right at this point, and I've gotten to know a lot of, like, I've already interviewed a bunch of people, and they have, like, San Jose roots, which I had no idea about. You know, from San Francisco, we're a little smug about San Francisco and that area. Like, we are the center of the universe. Uh, but there's lots of stuff going on here and that I'm learning about. So that's why I invited you all. all right. We're going to have folks introduce them, themselves first. So I'm going to, we're going to start with Camille and then kind of go around the circle. So Camille, if you introduce yourself, kind of where you're from, context, organization, pronouns, all that stuff. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Bruce. Hey, everyone. My name is Camille. She, her, Shaw, uh, born and raised in Dealey City, but based in Milpitas. And uh, I'm the program manager and head designer with Lee Filipino helping support our program, as well as supporting our work with grassroots organizing and community development. So really excited yes. to be here. Hey, um, Jester here. Uh, she, her pronouns. I am with Malaya South Bay, uh, which is an organization that fights for human rights, uh, sovereignty, and democracy in the Philippines. I am the uh, local coordinator and have been with Malaya since 2018, but have been a part of uh, Fact SJ, um, doing San Jose based Filipino uh, programming and events since like we started up in 2019. But I guess we'll talk more about that later. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Mark Serrano. I am the acting executive director of Filipino Youth Coalition San Jose. And I am also part of Filipino American National Historical Society, Santa Clara Valley, in which I am a core member. Great. Awesome. Uh, and somebody, I'm from San Jose. And for, so, so somebody, uh, what is, what is uh, FACT? So FACT SJ, it, it stands for Filipino Americans Coming Together San Jose. And it's actually a collective of um, organizations, which includes LEAD, um, FONS, is, SCV. Yeah. FYC. Which one, what's lead? Which one? That's oh, that's right. Lead Filipino, which yep. is the organization that Camille is part of. Uh, Filipino American National Historical Society, Santa Clara Valley, Filipino Youth Coalition, San Jose, uh, Bayani ng Kapataan, the Cultural School of so Social and Cultural Education, and then Malaya South Bay, Pawi South Bay, and Movable. Um, I don't think I, I don't I don't think I'm forgetting forgetting one, but I those are the ones that. Is that I everybody? Mind, so. Yeah, I think that's everyone. All right, there's, there's, you know, there's. I'm telling y'all, there's a lot going on down here that I, I am fully. Uh, I don't know if apologetic is the word, but I, I, I had no idea uh, being mostly San Francisco's uh, Daily City area. But it has been amazing to kind of get to know folks uh, and what and what's happening. But before we dive into kind of what's going on, I always ask our guests. Um, what's brought you joy the last, you know, recently, and it could be whatever, like, you, like, you know, if it's something bad's happening, but there, you found some joy in it, that's fine. Or if there was just something super cheesy that brought you joy or something deep and meaningful, uh, what brought, what, what has brought you joy? Uh, uh, Hustler, oh my goodness <laughs> All gracious. All good. 
<laughs> so we've been having this thing about Just saying, uh, <laughs> I, I, Jester's, oh my, okay. I don't know why Jester's name correctly because I'm an idiot and I cannot, uh, pronounce names and then you know like it's one of those earworms you get in your head and then you just get it wrong what's, what's something that's brought you joy let's not um, talk about your name what has uh, brought, brought me joy? joy i think recently <laughs> um it's just been really nice so i live with um i live very close to actually where we're going to have fam jam and all of the different events near the Berryessa area and i've been uh, able to actually catch my housemates um at night and usually we're just always all over the place so the fact that we're able to like spend time together i think the other night they were they were watching like the one piece anime um and it was just really nice to just catch everyone and then realize i'm like dozing off and like okay i'm gonna go to bed but it's really nice knowing everyone's home and i think that's in in i guess a world where we're just always running off doing our own things um that's brought me um a little slice of joy (laughs) Do you, do you have oh, commentary on I the like live it, action version? But I of that? also have a zero like context. Oh, I did not follow the, the manga or the anime at all. Um, but I just the visuals are really nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, I started to watch <laughs> it and realize that I'm old. And I just didn't I I was like, I I get I understood conceptually what was happening, but I could not track like I just there was too much going on. Anyway, there you go. Uh, Camille, what's brought you joy recently? For me, well, I will say that there is also a lot going on in that show. Great show, uh, but for me, I think what's bringing me joy is that with me moving, I think that I've appreciated all the moments that I've had with my parents. So they're not going to be dog sit right now. So they'll call me and they'll ask, "I'm like, so what's the dog doing?" And they're like, "Oh, she's doing good." And you know, we like to go on our little walk. So. For me, um, which is really heartfelt, and I really appreciate those the refund calls because they're not with chaotic on the other side of the phone. And so I'm just imagining the dog and my parents and the little walks are going on. So. Oh, good. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Mark, what about you? What's brought you joy lately? Um, well, I'm, pr- I'm, I'm probably sure it should be my child. <laughs> <laughs> it does I just had a child. I just had a child in January. Um, I'm still, I'm still kind of getting the hang of this new parent thing. I, I just my first child. Um, but other than other than him, uh, it would be probably the month of October, which is Filipino American History Month. And every time October comes around, um, I know it gets really busy and stuff. But I'm kind of like a busy guy. I like doing. I like like uh, you know the hustle and bustle and stuff. So. You know, that kind of brings me joy as well. So my child in nice. Filipino American history month. That's I, I have three, Mark, and I hardly ever mention them at all. So they, uh, <laughs> sometimes I forget. It's like, oh my god, I have a child. As long as you don't forget, as long as you don't forget him in the car, you're good. Like the, the well, you're, 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 <laughs> Mark, it happens. I had I we got we have this like newfangled car and it's it's an electric car and it for the longest time, it had this thing where it says, look in the back seat. Reminder, look in the back seat. And I'm like, what why? why does it keep telling me to look at the back? And I'm like, oh, because parents <laughs> are forgetting their kids back there, apparently. And so yeah. there's yeah. this alert that says before you get out. And I'm like, how do you turn this off? Because I'm leaving my kids back there on purpose now All at right. this point. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, for me, what's brought me joy lately? Um my uh, so we're empty nesters. My kids are all out, uh, and every once in a while, like my wife and I have very different tastes in TV. Like I'm John Wick, Fast and the Furious. Like I'm all that, and she's the Good Doctor, and like other mm-hmm. I don't know the Bear, and some of these other ones. And every once in a while, we find ones that we both like, and we actually wait for each other. Which is so we just uh, we started watching Picard from the beginning. And so we've been every night uh, we watch two episodes and she falls asleep in the middle of the second one every night. And then, but it's like, we've, we, every, every once in a while we get these like things where like for two weeks in a row, we'll make sure we sit and watch TV uh, together towards the end of the evening. And uh, we're both so busy and all over the place that it's always good to be able to do that. And then a kid comes and stays with us for a night and we're like, they mess it all up and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But um, otherwise, that, that's that's brought me a great deal of joy these days. All right, let's talk about Filipino-American History Month. Uh, those of you that are uh, tuning in again, 
Dr. Kevin Nadal talked a little bit about its roots and its history. So make sure you go listen to that episode. But um, let me uh, let me ask, how did you all and anybody can go? How did you all first become aware of Filipino American History Month? Because I know that it, it it's really boomed in the last few years. I mean, I think it's just really boomed, but it's been around for a while. But when just when was your first kind of like, oh, there's such a thing? When did you become aware of it? And feel free, anybody Ooh. jump in. Oh, wow. I'll let the ladies go first. Chivalry was not good. <laughs> yeah. I can go ahead and get us started. Yeah, thanks, Mark, for pushing it out to us. Okay. Um, for me, I feel like the first time I heard about the local investigation was when I got to college. So I, I went to San Jose State University, joined a client, the Silicon American Club or organization and we started celebrating October, observing it as Filipino American History Month. And for me, it was really weird. I grew up in Gailey City where there is a many, many Filipino Americans living <laughs> in there, the area. Are there? I, I'm yeah. shocked. Yeah, you know, it's like, you know, question mark with the fog, it's fog in Filipinos. Um, and I already had known about my identity and my culture, but to know that they we're celebrating our history, like I had no idea until college. So I feel like yeah. that was the first time I just really got to recognize the importance of our mm, community's right. contributions. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I think Thank you. I, others. I'm trying because I, I feel like I probably had a similar experience. I went to St. Mary's College in Moraga. And I think what you get when you go out from away from your big Filipino community <laughs> is realizing that you're Filipino. Um, and I, I think it was really yeah. like the introduction. Like I took an Asian American studies class and learned about the um, the Manongs for the first time. Um, Larry Itliang, Philip Veracruz. Um, at that point, I don't think it had been as mainstream yet, but folks were talking about celebrating like Larry Itliang Day. Um, and then, you know, I think things as after like undergrad, starting to see that, become more of a presence um, when I moved back to San Jose. So it was like college and then after college. Right. Awesome. Great. Mark, what about you? Um, I think for me, it was probably when I was in high school in the 90s. Um, and I just hella aged myself. But, um, you know, back in the 90s, there was like a, a real big, like, um, awareness of being like Filipino and being proud to be Filipino, you know, and, like everyone would wear like the Filipino strength shirts and stuff like that. And um, I actually learned about uh, Filipino American History Month through Filipino Youth Coalition. Um, I wasn't formally part of um, of the organization quite yet, uh, but my brother was, and um, like he would bring home like literature and. You know, he, you know, I would hear him talking about it and just like friends talking about it and stuff. So I, I, I didn't actually find out about uh, about um, Filipino American History Month, like, a, you know, through like an official outlet. It was just kind of like, oh, you know, you know, this this month is Filipino American History Month. But, you know, I guess that's how it started for me. All right. Awesome. That's great. I realized, Mark, when I read your bio that uh, you're a San Francisco state. Yeah, uh, that's where mm -hmm. I went. But I. So here I'm going to age myself because uh, I went to San Francisco State before there was an Asian American Studies degree, but I got one. Oh wow! Yeah, so I I was in the '90s or the late '80s, early '90s, and got a degree in Asian American Studies, Religion, and Sociology, and but I had to combine them all together before they had an actual Asian American. So you're not you're not the oldest one here. Uh, but you did say oh, no. hella. You did say you did say hella, which does age you somewhat but you know that's all right <laughs> hella is like part of my timeless i i say it all the time my kids are like oh my god it yeah. is i like i'm, yeah. I'm yeah. waiting for my kids to start saying it again i'm like see it's a good word it is a good word. that's a good word um awesome well that that's that's great now tell me um what what do we got going on in san jose uh what activities are happening from each organizations things that are going on for a Philippine American History Month. So and then I'll, uh, those of you who are listening, that'll all be in the show notes. So we'll, you'll see all the calendars and Instagram links and all that kind of stuff. So uh, go ahead. Uh, Mark, why don't you start? What's, what do we got going on with all the, the groups that you're part of? So for FONS, um, actually, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the events that we have for Filipino American History Month, um, it kind of, you know, all of our organizations are kind of a part of it. 
Right. Um, again, fact that Jay is this, you know, this this collaborative that kind of adds into everything that happens in October. So first and foremost, uh, this Saturday, uh, which I don't know the date, I think it's the seventh. This Saturday, we have a Pinoy Town Art Walk, and that's happening at in Japantown. And um, a, a bulk of like what that what that um, a bulk of that event is going to be happening at Empire Seven, and basically that's going to be an event where we're showcasing like different artists, like uh, different artists like paintings, and you know we got some music. I'm DJing that uh, that day with uh, with a buddy of mine, uh, Abe Noor, and it's just going to be a, a a nice afternoon of um, just art and music and different things like that. Um, we also have what is called Pinoy Town walking tours which is um which also happens in japan town a lot of people don't know but um uh in the 1920s and 1930s uh they had they had uh japan town had like a small enclave of filipinos that lived there and there was filipino businesses filipino families and uh and they lived there for a while and um it's strange because uh being in san jose myself and and uh, being like a like an Asian American studies major, I I didn't find out about Pinoy Town until maybe when I joined when I joined Fonz about five six years ago, you know. So we do a walking tour, which takes which takes people around uh, around the places that would make up Pinoy Town, and that happens every Sunday of every Sunday of October, and then we also have Fam Jam, which I'll probably which I'll let you know the other. T- uh, other two ladies uh, speak on a little bit more later on, but it's 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 our annual events where we bring uh, local talents out to perform, and we also have vendors and food trucks, and it's a free event. It happens at the Garden Garden of the Fleet or Garden at the Fleet, and that's going to be on the twentieth, which is a Friday, and it's from five to nine. Awesome! Get there so. early, all. I tried to get there last time, and I was like. All these Filipinos are hell early. What is up with that? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I was, I was, I swear, I was waiting in that to drive in for like forty five minutes. I'm like, this, what is happening? It was that line gets long, man. Oh, line yeah, gets it was, long. it was awesome. It was awesome. That All right, Camille, like, other things going way. on. What are what's going on, Camille? That you that other things are happening. Yeah, so I think also just to add on to the Pinoy Town Art Walk that Mark I just mentioned on October seventh, it's actually our first uh, art walk ever to help. Run, provide the historical context of the Filipino community, but also just to gather all the local San Jose based, or Santa Clara County based film artists and performers. So, you know, in the Bay, there are different film events that are going on. So, I think this event upcoming is going to be very cool since it's first of its kind and hopefully an annual event. But the other events that Marcus mentioned, we're also having our Filipino American History Month flag raising and lighting ceremony, which is sponsored by. San Jose City Council. So with that, we're having the school games, the free tacos, free chips and salsa, as well as you know more local performers, local makers, and resources like all of our organizations coming out to celebrate and observe Filipino American History Month. I think this event specifically is it's free, family friendly, of course, but I think it's great just to truly settle in the historical context and understand how we can continue to celebrate and observe this month with all all the festivities. So I feel like it's more reflective, a little bit more introspective about the topics, the speakers, and of course, the community leaders that are coming to enjoy this event with us. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jessor, what uh, what do you got going on? Well, right now we're definitely going to be rolling out to the community and bringing out our members like for those events that were just being described. Um, I do want to shout out the one of our uh, friends who is a drag artist. Um, she's called Manong, um, and she has the um, third uh, third annual, third ever, uh, Kababayan Drag Brunch that will be at Mama Kin uh, on October 21st, um, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and she's bringing out um, all the other uh Filipino queens um, to go uh, be out there and also give a chance for community to speak. So um, I think it's going to be a really good time. There's a plethora of events. And I think there's also um, uh, Camille or Mark when the there's the open mic that's also happening at the end of the month. I just don't. Yes, oh, I just oh, don't yeah. recall all the I, I, details. I so I'm going to hand it off yeah, to someone yes. to describe that. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so it's going to be called our family friendly open mic. Um, it'll be on Saturday, October 28th from 5 to 8 p.m. 5 to 6, we're actually inviting the monongs and monongs of our community to do a little bit of talk story, share their experience of, you know, observing both the American history month and what they've seen over the years. And then from 6 to 8, we'll invite it to all the local artists, spoken word. We have stand-up comedy as well from, so it's from 6 to 8, so... Ruth, if you're trying to come over and uh, yeah. share a little bit of your spoken word, the, your reading. The last, I, uh, I'm always amazed at people who get up and do things that are super vulnerable, like sing. I, I am not a singer or who like will do like play. Uh, I'm just like, you go. I'm like, yes, you go. I, and <laughs> I, I have this dream about being a stand up comic and someday. And, but then it's like, that is the most terrifying thing i can do a lot of stuff by myself on stage and i'm fine but like that like i just can't imagine i, I want to say about the the uh pinoy town um i when i first moved here a couple about a year and a half ago now i saw that and came and that was kind of my first introduction i think that's when i may have met you first mark and, um, i knew we had a hit because i dj'd in high school my kids don't believe me but i i dj'd in high school and um, <laughs> i was like I'm going to show up when Mark DJs, so I can't be there this weekend, unfortunately. But um, but the thing that that I found personally out of that, so my uh, my grandfather's side is Ilocano, and um, we had, uh, her, his maiden grandfather, grandmother's name, last name is Bacosa, B-A-C-O-S-A. And uh, my kids uh, have their mother's last name. We The boys would have my last name, the girls would have Robin's last name, and we have three girls. So, um, and so my wife is white. So they have these like super white first and last names. So we gave them Bacosa as a middle name. I'm like, we got to get some brown in there. Like, <laughs> they all, so they all have the same middle name, but we've never seen Bacosa. They would ask me like, dad, are you sure Bacosa is Filipino? Cause we've never seen it anywhere. And I'm on this walking tour and I see that there was this cafe called the Bacosa like international cafe or something. And I had never seen my family name out in the wild. I mean, it was like, it was one of those, like, it's real. Like, okay. Like I, it's we're we're legit. So mm-hmm. thank you for that, for that tour, because that was like, I texted my kids, shut them pictures. And I was like, look, it's <laughs> Filipino. I probably did not trick you. Uh, so <laughs> So there we go. So uh, that's great. All right. So um, those are all amazing things that are going on. Um, for me, uh, Philippine American History Month, so the part of it, I kind of, um, uh, I kind of have a cheat because I knew, uh, I knew Dawn Mabalon. Uh, she, mm-hmm. her family and I went to the same church and all that. And I did his, her, her Jesse's wedding. So I knew about Filipino History Month, f- knew about Filipino History Month like way early, but not because I was any more aware it was just because everybody around us, we were doing Little Manila and all that stuff in Stockton, where I grew up. So that, um, so I've, but so I've seen it, and these last like five or six years have just been amazing to see it much more mainstream. Uh, but even still, like we all grew up Filipino. Sometimes you're aware of it, sometimes you're not. But um, so my next question for you though is so. You know, we have a lot that the span of what it means to be Filipino, Filipino American is just as diverse as we are. And I know that my kids at times, I'm certainly at times have said like, well, somebody is like really Filipino. I'm not as Filipino. Like, and that whole de- like internal conflict about am I Filipino enough? Like if you have a young person come up to you and say like, I don't feel like I'm really Filipino enough. How, how do you respond to, to young folks or whoever that are struggling with that idea about this idea that there is like a way to measure your Filipino-ness. Uh, but how, how might, how might you respond to that? And anybody feel free to go ahead and chime in. Um, I guess I can go first. Um, <clears throat> well, for me, no one, no, no one thinks that I'm Filipino. Everyone just kind of assumes that I'm either Samoan or Tongan. <laughs> um, and it's, and it's really because of like my size and my tattoos and just, you know, whatever. But, um, when they do find out that I'm Filipino, it's like, oh, I would have never guessed, you know, and that, yeah. al- that, that always used to bother me, you know, but, you know, because I think right. in people's minds, 
like um being filipino like i don't i don't know how to speak the language you know what i mean yeah. or i don't even you know there's a lot of like filipino things that i don't do you know what i mean right. and um i'll always get like oh you know you don't seem like you're filipino but what is being filipino you know what i mean and you know the whole filipino uh, you know being filipino enough you know my thing is well if you're for me it's like if you're aware of who you are and you have even just one drop, you know, the one drop rule, right? Where it's like, you know, you have even just a little bit of blood of being Filipino, you know what I mean? Um, that That's enough, you know what I mean? There shouldn't be, I don't believe that there should be some sort of scale, you know what I mean? Even if you were, you know, even if you were mostly, mostly, I don't know, white or something like that, but you identify with the Filipino that's in you, the one drop of Filipino that's in you, that's enough for you to be considered Filipino. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, it shouldn't be the, like the language or the food that you eat or, you know, taking off your slippers when you come inside. You know what I mean? Like, so. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you, and I, I think there's a lot of it that happens where we do it to ourselves, too. Like, I'll go into the community and like we're trying to measure where everybody is. Like some of it's like just we want to know, like, are you legitimately like down with the stuff? But also. I think there is this like ranking of, do you speak? Do you eat? Who do you know? Like what's the, all those things that, but yeah. Yeah. Camille, what about you? Do you, what, how, how do you respond to somebody that talks about that question of Filipino enough? Yeah. I feel like this is like one of my favorite questions. I feel like it go on and on. So you're going to have to stop me at some point. Uh, but I feel like this is something that I talk about a lot with my friends because our biggest realization of the culture and identity came from when we went to college but growing up, I had always just felt, felt Filipino. Like, I knew I was Filipino. I, I learned, my, my family had the Manny Pacquiao party. <laughs> we were rolling up with the Filipino spaghetti, the rumpia. And I grew up in New York City, as I just mentioned. So there wasn't, like, I didn't see, or I saw a lot of myself and other people. And the tree on top was, my last name is Valerio, like the bakery. Um, and unfortunately, I don't own it, so I can't get it in give everyone free Oh, bread. we all went. But, we were all like, oh, I know. awesome. Oh, never mind. I know the, the light in everyone's eyes, but I'm so sorry to disappoint you. But I think just knowing all that and growing up with all those different factors, I always felt like I was Filipino. But when Mark mentioned the language piece, that is the one part that I'd always, in the back of my mind, felt like, oh, am I Filipino enough? Mm -hmm. And it brought me to that question. And so what I would say to someone, you know, when I'm talking about it with them is that, you know, being Filipino is like a fact, just as much as it's true like, that we breathe oxygen, that we breathe air. You know, like that's not something that someone can, not, someone else can just take away or say that it isn't true because you are Filipino no matter what. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's what I would say in response. Um, Thank you. I Justin. also like this question, and I think I've definitely had my own struggles with it. But I, I think what I'm trying to figure out is what's that through line that unites us um, in everything, and I, I really think it's being able to fight and show up for your community. I think the the big thing that's been inspiring, uh, whether Filipino, Filipino American history is like, you know, you don't resist um, colonization for like hundreds of years without showing up for your community and fighting. Um, you don't get through hard times of assimilation of all of that. It's that really finding, you know, that very big importance of showing up for your friends, your crew, your family, all those people. Um, and it is like a lot oftentimes around the same kind of foods, the same kind of activities, karaoke, whatever, different languages. Um, but I think there's something um, that I've always appreciated. Um, you know, if we say that question comes forward, like, are you Filipino enough? Yes, you are. If you feel those intense emotions, if you feel for the people around you, like, you, you are. Um, and I think that's I've, uh, the thing that I've, mm. I'm always learning and trying to combat when I feel like I'm less than. <laughs> um, but uh, that's, that's kind of where I'm mm. settling right now in, in that sort of question. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting. Everybody I've talked to so far, and I, I think there is something about the Filipino-ness because of mm -hmm. how different we all look in our experiences. And, our, and that comes yeah. from like, just colonialism in general from the Philippines, like all of the ways that that's a, like, there's not this natural, like, oh yeah, you could, most Filipinos look like this, right? You, you just can't, you can't do it. Um, 
I had the privilege of being at the Women's World Cup this summer, and I watched the Philippines, uh, the women's team at their beat New Zealand. Amazing. Uh, but you look at that soccer team, and mm. that in itself, it looks like what the Filipinos look like. I mean, they're our keeper. I mean, she she's probably a, a quarter Filipino, maybe like blood, but so she looks super white. And there was a there was a fan there who was like, oh well, the Filipinos they got a rigger, and I'm like, my my daughter's like, should we explain about colonization? And I'm like, no, we just let's just let it go. But right, it was because she couldn't be Filipino because of what she looked like, but yet she clearly was like we could see it. So I think that part mm-hmm. of it it's just so broad. Uh, but everybody I've talked to has had this identity question, no matter where you grew up and how much Filipino ness you have around you. My kids, um, and we do this to ourselves, right? My, my one of my kids says, "Dad, I don't like ube," and I know Mark, I don't think <laughs> you like fine. ube either. Nope. <laughs> and she's like, "You're Filipino." She's like, and they get to take away. <laughs> okay. Hold on, like, actually, okay. you know what? You know what? I just want to. Po- I just want to put this out there. It's not that I like hate ube. It's just I don't understand the hype. You know what I mean? It's like oh, yeah. Ube, everything. Cooking oh, yeah. is. Well, it, it, hit, it hit Trader Joe's. As soon as it hits Trader Joe's, I'm like, oh. But that, oh, that yeah. that's why so Ube. Exactly. <laughs> 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 oh, that too. No, it is really good. <laughs> okay, so they're doing it right. They're doing it right. I actually do want to point, um, and, and this is probably something that um, that most people, you know, especially when it comes to talking about like identity and stuff. Um, I think one of the main one of the main things that needs to be pointed out is that this whole like um, Filipino enough conversation, Mm -hmm. you know, it's driven a wedge Mm -hmm. between Filipino born like Filipino Americans and then folks that come from the Philippines. And it's been like a it's been like an age long kind of conflict. You know what I mean? And for us Filipino Americans, um, it's crazy because, you know, when you go to the Philippines, you know what I mean? You're not. Filipino, you're American, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. number one, because you dress different, differently and you talk differently, you know. But here in the U.S., we're not exactly American, you know what I mean? I mean, when you, when people ask you uh, or, or when you say, oh, yeah, I'm American. Oh, but what kind of American? You know what I mean? So there's that. I'm not going to mention it, but there's that, you know, there's that there's definitely that um, that idea of what being an American is, you know. But I think. <clears throat> I think the conversation of whether or not you're Filipino can both destroy us and bring us back up. We just have to be able to learn how to, you know, how to learn how to approach that, you know, and I yeah. think discussions like this is absolutely uh, needed. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think you're right. I mean, I think that that the Phil, Phil Am and Filipino thing, but now Malaya does a lot across, obviously. So how does that impact your work? I mean, how does that, like are those conversations that you intentionally have, or yeah, like, I think yeah, it's, just talk about it's that interesting because you know we are definitely um, like our organization is based in the U.S., but our big thing is uh, when we talk about being a part of Malaya, we see ourselves as part and parcel of the struggle back home, and part of that is understanding the roots of why we came here in the first place and what brought our families to uh, the U.S. is a very dire economic situation that, you know, stems from the relationship, like the colonial relationship of the United States to the Philippines. And um, I think what happens, though, um, because sometimes we'll talk about the issues of human rights, like that's our big thing is um, there are there are things that are affecting our families back home as part of the roots of why we're here in the first place. And it's not just affecting us like fascism and (laughs) dictatorship is like on the rise overall. Um, But we have to see that we are, we have a particular role as people who are in the belly of the beast to like try to push um, for our money to not go to fund like human rights violations, because we know that even to today, right, the U.S. has a, a vested interest in like keeping uh, the Philippines close, whether it's for like military bases, resources, a market to like sell things to. And when we try to come into the community and talk about that, we we come up with people who are like, well, I was, I actually worked under the Marcos administration. How old are you? Like, have you ever been there before? And the whole thing is oh, like, my family yeah. can tell you the story of how we've been impacted by 
all of this. Like, I think um, there's always a level of like, well, if you like would like to know, like see for yourself, like what it's like in the Philippines. And it's like, but we have. <laughs> um, and it's like, you know, it's just it's interesting. That's, I think, where we have those questions of like, do you really know where you come from? Mm. And I, I would say we do. I would say that, um, you know, it, it's interesting, though, to try to. Like, I'm not trying to fight every like tita and tito about like all these things. Though sometimes you feel the urge. <laughs> but, like um, even in that, it's like you know sometimes people think that. I think what we're realizing is like sometimes people think that if they like defend, um, I guess like these sort of unequal policies, then maybe they'll be more accepted in America, and that's not really how it works out, mm. unfortunately. So no. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember watching, was it Prop 187 <laughs> years ago? This I'm going to age myself down too, around, uh, and and all these Filipinos getting up there speaking on behalf of the U.S. government in not helpful ways. And I'm like, <laughs> and I wanted to be like bad Filipino. Like I could get to judge, right? I get to rate. But it was just like buying into a lot of the things that like Malaya and others are trying to work against. Which yeah, and, all this and other it's hard because I think part of wow, like just. growing up or being in our community is realizing a lot of our family and other folks make decisions based off survival. And it's not and sometimes there's disinformation, misinformation. Yeah. And it's like it's such a nuanced thing um, that we really only get when we're like on the ground with each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just like to judge quickly. It's, That's it's just good more for a stand up routine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sorry. No, I'm not doing that. I'm just not doing that. Uh, you all are great. Uh, so, you, folks who are listening to this, um, I can, all the links are in there. Their bios are in there. You can show. Please go and visit, uh, get to know, follow all the things uh, so that you can find out a lot more what's going on with all the organizations that are going on. I mean, again, I'm new to San Jose, uh, and it has just been a, a just wonderful to kind of see a whole nother. Um, I don't know, a whole other part of the Philippine American community in the Bay Area uh, being so alive. So thank you all for the work that you're doing. But before we end, I ask all of our guests this question. Uh, what are you listening to? What are you reading? What are you watching? So it could be whenever you like, just whenever. And I will start. I just got done listening to the podcast about Michael Jackson, the second chance, the second look, where they take a look at like this the, this tension between accusation and allegation and ch around child molestation and music. And it was so good. So, so good. Um, I just got done with that, but I would, I would highly suggest people listen to that. If any of you remember that, know the DJ J smooth out of New York, he is one of the co-hosts um, and it is so well done. They do not tell you what to think at the end. They tell you where they landed, where other people landed. Um, and I won't spoil it for you, but it is really good. So if you are in that place where you're thinking about Michael Jackson, trying to figure out where you land, all that, excellent podcast. So it's called Second Look. All right. Um, anybody else? What are you listening to, watching, or, or reading? Do you want to share? Um, I um I just started um I just started watching the Godfather series. Oh. Uh, I love that movie, and I wa I like to watch it every few months. You know, just to kind of, you know, I don't know. I mean, I just, I, I love the movie. Few, every few months? Yeah. <laughs> I, that's how much I love the movie. <laughs> I know. And I'll do, I because I'm a very, like, uh, like I love, like, like mob movies, like Godfather, Goodfellas, Donnie Brasco, you know, and I'll just kind of rotate them throughout, you know, throughout the year and stuff. But um, I, I listen to a lot of island reggae. Um, so... And I so I so I have downloaded this app called High Ninety Three, and it's basically one of the radio stations that are out there in Oahu. And it kind of reminds and like like Oahu is like my second home, you know. So it kind of reminds me of Hawaii when I'm away from Hawaii. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, reading, I don't I I, I read a, I read a lot of Excel Excel spreadsheets. I'm a <laughs> billing analyst, which is like my day job and stuff. So I'm sitting in front of the computer for eight hours. So that's really what I'm reading. Numbers and data, you know. Well, my reading is actually listening. I listen. To, I now listen to all of my books, which uh, <laughs> is. I but I I count it as reading. So, uh, Camille, why don't you uh, go for it? What are you reading, listening to, or watching? Any any or all? I 
just finished watching something. It is a uh, Netflix series called Sex Education. Uh, oh, it yeah. Beautiful last season. So it was upon disability justice, you know, what it's like to be a, like a single mother, raising a child, you know, repairing relationships with family and friends. So I feel like it just has a checklist and it just takes all the boxes. And right now, like, just post-show morning, like, just such a great show. Right, so like, let me, ask you, know, let, let me ask you a question, Camille. So when when Sex Education came out the first season, we sat down, I sat down with my kids and started watching it. And I was like, oh, I can't do this. I can't do it. Now, they were fine. They were like, we don't care. I, they're like, this is like, it's a you issue, dad. Like, we don't care. And I'm like, yeah, it, it is a me issue and I'm leaving now. So, uh, but I've heard this last season is amazing. Could you watch it with your family, with your parents? I could watch this last season with my family. That right. first season, no, but that last season, you yeah. Okay. You might, have to, you might have to skip a little, fast forward a little bit, but overall, you should okay. watch it. Yeah, I'm probably not <laughs> doing that, but yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I have been all over this uh, this semi in sync comeback, (laughs) and so (laughs) and so that better together song, the troll soundtrack. I'm just like I get to hear J C Shazay's voice again. (laughs) Everything is okay. We'll be okay, everyone. There's a pandemic still, but (laughs) at least this is happening. So are they, so I just noticed, right? I'm like, all of a sudden, they're in all of, like, my stuff. I don't know. Like, I heard Justin's back? going on like, tour again. But people are like, does that mean a tour isn't possible for NSYNC? I'm, now my For You page is just all, it's just clearly I've just been clicking everything. The algorithm knows. So, <laughs> but I'm hopeful. I don't know. Um, I, I hope the Trolls movie does okay. <laughs> but I'm excited to hear those voices again so that's what's been on loop for me <laughs> oh that's awesome that's awesome uh great all right thank you all this has been wonderful thank you for being on um yeah thank you for whatever you're doing in the community again uh Philbin american history month y'all um for those of you that are listening to this for the first time make sure you go to all the podcast places do all the things rate review subscribe all that Make sure you look down in the show notes and click on and follow all of the things uh, that we have all of that in there. Uh, and again, just there and Camille and Mark, thank you for thank hanging you. out on BRC and friends today. All right, all you're welcome. All right. Uh, and folks, we'll see you uh, in a few days with the next episode that is on Filipino, Filipino American history month. So thank you for joining us today on BRC and friends. BRC and Friends was hosted and produced by Bruce Reyes Chow. Co-hosts were Jorge Bautista, Mickey Scott Bay Jones, Amy Kim Karemis Parks, and Laura Monaco Heifetz. And the theme music was composed and recorded by Marissa Magdal Laron. And feel free to connect with any of us via the show notes. And lastly, please don't make me beg. Take a moment to rate, review, and subscribe to BRC and Friends wherever you listen to podcasts. Until the next episode, thanks for listening to BRC and Friends.